Greg is meeting local historian Dr. Daryl Leeworthy, who's been looking into William's life in Stanley Town. So, welcome to the Rondo, Greg, um, and to Stanley Town itself. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. And uh, I must say, it's really surreal to be standing outside William's next home from Port Maddock. If I show you this photograph here, ah. um, which you can immediately place yourself in just by looking at the Absolutely. road. Absolutely, yeah. You can see all the pits along the valley floor there. Following the line of the valley. Absolutely. Going round. So, so that picture was taken probably when he was living in the house. Yeah. So my feeling is that as well as finding work here, yeah. he was using this distance to get away from fairly sticky situation up in, in Port Maddox. Well, if you think that uh, there were about 500 people living in the Ronda in 1801, and by the time um, William is down here, there's over 150,000 well, people. Um, they've come from the north, the north of England, the West Midlands, the West Country. His neighbours, they they've never met him before. They might be from Bristol. Right. Um, and so it doesn't really matter. We're right. making a new society. Yeah. It's an entirely logical journey in a way. Yeah. So... The big question is, Daryl, have you found any other information that would give me more of a picture of William? Well, we've managed to, far, uh, to, to trace William and Martha's last surviving daughter, Mary Ann Nguyen, who was uh, rather keen to meet you. Who's still alive? She is indeed, yes. <laughs> well, that is incredible. I'm trying to think what, what relation she is to me, then. Step-grandmother? No. Half granny? I've got a half great aunt. <laughs> I didn't know about. Greg knows that as well as having two daughters with his great grandmother, Elizabeth, his great grandfather, William Owen, had another family with Martha Williams, the woman he married. Their eldest children were Bessie and Robert. And Greg's now discovered that their youngest daughter, Mary Unwin, who was born in 1928, is still living in South Wales. Greg has come across the valley to the Welfare Hall in Tylerstown, which has been the hub of the local community since the 1930s. He's meeting Mary Unwin here. Hello. Hello. Hello, Mary Hello. Hello. <laughs> Lovely to meet you. <laughs> I've got a lot of me to get up. You will? <laughs> How are you? Very well, thank you. It's nice oh, to meet you. You are like my family. Yeah? Do that now, yes. Do I look like them? Yes, you do, yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, I can see it in your face as well. I really can. <laughs> You've got such similar eyes to my nine. Never. Yeah. You look like my great-grandson. <laughs> really? Yeah. Well, it's... Pretty recent news to you that there were well, that you had dead. two half sisters. I couldn't believe it. Never ever thought of it. What I know is that by the time your dad came down here, he already had two children. Yes, that's so it. How many how many brothers and sisters were there in the end? Six boys and three girls. Oh, then that's even. That's something like you, but there. I can't tell you how much yes. he looks like my dad. Yes, and my brother Gwyneth. That's your brother. Yes. He was a smooth one, wasn't he? Yeah, oh, yes. Yeah. And there's me by there. Ah. And that's my mother. That's your mum? Yes. Hard-working woman. Martha, was yeah. she? Do you think your mother knew that he no, had other children? No, I don't think she did. I don't think she did. She had a very nice life with him at all. Really? Very jealous. Very moody. He was a very jealous man? Yes. So he wanted to be jealous and all, didn't he? Well, it's mm. amazing that he was yeah. a jealous one, yes. because he yes. was... awful jealous. She had three daughters, and my mother used to say to us, if you had the life that I had, I'd rather bury you. <sighs> Didn't want us three girls to get married. Because life with William yes, was that bad? There he is, but there. There he is? Yeah. William. Mm. It's the first time I've seen him. Mm. And I feel <laughs> like I've got to know him very well over the last few days. <laughs> Yeah. The picture we've picked up of him as a young man was he was a real Jack the Lad, you oh, know? Oh, yeah. That he was oh, a real... he was Jack the Lad, all right. He looks tall. Was he tall? Yes, he was, yes. Big man, very big man. Like over six foot, was he? Yeah. Mm. Not freakish, not six eight. Oh, no, not no, like no, not like him, <laughs> no. <laughs> Here's his great-grandson yeah. tracking his daughter down yeah. 100 years later. Yeah. I bet he never thought that would happen, did no. he? <laughs> but he's 
Turn in his gravy, isn't well, it? Well, yeah. <laughs> you got found out. Yeah. <laughs> you always get found out in the end. In the end, end. Yeah. even if it is yes. 110 yeah. years later. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> William died in 1941, and Mary Onwin has told Greg that his grave is just up the road, in the local Tylerstown Cemetery. I'm looking for William's final resting place. Ah, here he is. I don't think it would be um, right for me to be too negative about a man when I'm standing next to his grave. I don't think my nine would like that, but uh, the truth is I've followed the journey of, by most accounts, quite a difficult man. But what I'm left feeling is that I don't connect with him. I can see my family in, in Marianne Wynne, but I can't see my family in William from everything I know about him. Weirdly, I feel more connected to Evan 